Welcome, this may be one of the last videos I do from this office because in two days time the movers are going to come and start packing stuff up and taking stuff away. Still have, uh, we're going to take stuff, some stuff ourselves down, but it's getting to crunch time. So today we actually spent quite a bit of time getting some stuff prepped for the movers and so it was disassembling the gym. To make it a little easier on them, I did move a lot of our weights into our garage from out of our walkout basement into the garage. Myself and my wife helped too. And um, I think we moved about 2,000 pounds today. So it's it's a walkout basement, but we got uphill coming around the house. And it's not a fun time, I'll tell you. It's uh, actually kind of crappy. Um, don't have the entire gym disassembled yet. Most of it is. Still got to do some stuff tomorrow. They won't be here till Wednesday to start packing. It won't load till Thursday. I'm still finishing closing on the house and everything too. So we're in the underwriting phase right now with that. So everything's looking pretty good. The home appraisal took place Saturday. So we should get the results tomorrow. As long as that looks good, there shouldn't be anything in the way there. So uh, the home insurance thing has been funky. I don't know why, but... Um, Every through everything we shopped around at, we had one people. It's like okay, they couldn't pull auto insurance at this one company. The other company couldn't pull like homeowners insurance. It, it's just been weird. Don't recall having this problem last time around. The only thing I'd advise is talk to a few people, get a few quotes. Um, we may be going with one of the more pricier quotes, but it looks like American Family Insurance is going to be the route we go. Um, they just have very nice coverage and everything, and it's right around what we baked in when we factored in our monthly mortgage rate. So right there at that kind of cost that we assumed we'd be paying. I'm a little leery when somebody comes in with a homeowner's insurance quote. It's just so much cheaper than everybody else. Like, I, you know, how are they coming in at 900 bucks? What's the coverage going to be like? And I also advise look at the uh, NAIC scores. You can find those online, and that tells you – like the average industry is about complaints when you're trying to make claims. The industry average is a one. And so look and see where the company you're looking at, shopping around at, where do they scale on that? If their score is below a one, like it's 0 0.3, 0 0.4, that means they're better than the industry average. If it's one or great, they're either at or above the average. So it's important to look at that um, and, and stuff. So um, it's just... Don't always just go with what's cheapest because if you end up having an issue, you know, obviously you want to keep it reasonable, but if you end up having an issue, you want to make sure you can get what you need because say you have a house fire or something like that, you're going to be going through a traumatic experience. You don't want to deal, you know, the, the insurance people, you don't want it to be a big hassle. You know, you want to be able to make sure that you get what you need out of it because um, otherwise it's going to be crappy. Man. Yeah. Sweated a ton today. Just moving all that crap. Not fun. Moving is just not fun. And we're probably in one of the much better off ones. I don't know why, but you know our movers are going to be doing full packing and everything. It's almost like you feel guilty about that for some reason. I don't understand that mentality. Um, we're moving some of our stuff. We're actually, you know, so the plan is right now, they're going to come pack. They're going to load. We don't close until next Friday, not this Friday, but next Friday. And they're not going to deliver until the week after that. Um, so we're going to close. We're going to come back. We're going to get a U-Haul. We're going to load up some of the essentials, like uh, a place for us to sit and sleep on, you know, one TV, a computer desk, our computers, other stuff we just don't want them to move. So I'm going to move the computers ourselves, you know, some other stuff like firearms, stuff like that, and everything. And so we're going to move that stuff in the U-Haul and be done there Saturday and then I'll be able to start my job on the Monday and then the next day or some point after sometime either the next day or all the way up to the following Saturday they'll deliver the stuff and so I have today's Monday and so I start my new job in two weeks two weeks so it's crazy this whole process it's been well you know can look even longer than that but at least since may um been a long process and so um but tips guidance for those that are going through the move um with homeowners insurance 
talk to a few people. They're all going to want to bundle auto. And, you know, we're in a tricky situation where we already have something. But for some reason, they could not pull a quote for us. And we use GEICO right now. GEICO does not underwrite homeowner's insurance. What they do is they find somebody else to do it. So, And you can't pick who. So for us, we went through GEICO for home insurance. They actually use HomeSite. And so, you know, whether you want to do that or not, I mean, I think it's better to find somebody. We did it because we bundled and honestly didn't know better as first house for buying. Um, I'll say Allstate probably provided the lowest quote, which is funny because everyone keeps talking about their rates going way up. And, man, their quote was, like, super, super low. But I've heard a lot of horror stories about people having to deal with that. So I just went and said, you know what, no. And um, a realtor recommended American Family Insurance, and they came in and probably the higher quote. But it, it looks good. I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty reasonable and pretty much where I expected. So it looks like that's where we're going to go. Oh, man, I'm, I am so stressed out, though. It's not even funny. Um you know, it's just one of those things you want it to be done. You know, like I said, I feel like I look around the house, I look at the stuff they're going to be packing up, and I'm like, oh my God, it's just so much crap. And uh, I'm like, how are they going to get that? You know, they're going to pack in a day, and then they're going to load the next day. And I'm like, how are they going to get all that done? But then last time I remembered, you know, they, they rock through that stuff. They're good at what they do and everything. So um, the only advice I'd have is just make sure everything's pretty much plug and play for them. So. That's why we're trying to make it as simple as possible. So everything you guys are taking is going to be here. This is stuff we're going to keep. We're going to unplug everything, try to have it all ready to go for them. So it's as painless as possible for that, and it can go quickly. Um, and then that, you know, I'll be able to report in afterwards how it went. And then we're going to be kind of slumming it here with just the bare bones for, uh, they're, they're going to pack, and then they're going to load Thursday, and so it'll be... Um, a week so but we'll have a chance to clean the house fix some of the stuff on the walls you know just touch up the paint plenty of stuff we're going to be doing so it's not like we're going to be just sitting around it's kind of crappy not having our gym and stuff we're not going to have any of that but you know it's all right we'll be fine we haven't had a lot of time to train anyway so last week because everything's going around just constantly like today we just um went back and forth with um the sellers and everything so the seller's agent and my realtor, everything's finally locked in though. So we're you know, outside the home appraisal being funky, which it shouldn't have any issues. Outside of that, it's a done deal now. So, But um, we had some stuff we wanted them to address beforehand. And they were going to address everything but one item. You know, it was to do with the deck and not having bracings, but the builder just went in and did it anyways. So it seems pretty reasonable. And they, they went and cleared out these woods behind the fence and everything for us. Didn't have to do that since we already locked in. It wasn't anything they needed to do. They put some paving stones down. Like I said, it seemed pretty reasonable, pretty decent people. So um, I've been pretty impressed with them so far. And uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem. So anyways, I'm going to keep it short because I'm tired and I'm worn out and I got a lot to do tomorrow. I just got a lot to do. She's much better at this than I am. I suck at this crap. Uh, when I start going through stuff, I just see it. And I'm like, oh my God, what? I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I get distracted easy and um, just a mess. But um, I got some interesting stuff on the nuclear war simulation front too. So if you watch those videos, and if you don't, I highly recommend you do, but the vast majority of my viewers watch those videos. They don't watch these videos, so chances are, it's, well, maybe family and stuff. But if you don't watch those, definitely recommend you check them out. I got some good stuff that's going to come down the pipe. I don't know when it's going to happen. We're going to have our computers and stuff, but I'm not going to have this set up right now. We're just going to be kind of in a, basically utilize in one room, so it may be difficult to produce any content. But I'm working with Command Modern Operations and really trying to get in depth um, to see. So, like, I was just testing out um, a U.S. Um, Seawolf attack sub, trying to eliminate one of the Russian um, nuclear armed subs, the Delta IV, and everything, and the reaction time they'd have. So, like, what if we, you know, if we fired torpedoes at it uh, from eh, about eight nautical miles out? Um, from launch detection to sub destroyed, what would be that time frame? And it was about three minutes in the simulation. So, um, 
then you look at, okay, could they report in and say, hey, we're under attack, you know, want authorization to fire, you know, any of those things. So if we decided, and that's really where the real question is going to come down when it comes to um, nuclear warfare, is the survivability of sub base platforms. And how well can we track them? How well can we track them right now? Are we able to track them with satellites? Like, you know, there's a lot of questions out there that we don't, well, we, general public, don't know the answer to. Um, but there's also, some, you know, um, so that's a big question about that. Because if they can reliably track our subs or we can reliably track their subs and we have assets that can engage and destroy those and there are a lot of anti-submarine warfare platforms you know you could whether it's a, you know an attack sub or you have um helicopters you have u.s destroyers you have or destroyer ships you have a lot of different platforms that can engage in anti-submarine warfare the real question is can you track them to be able to reliably engage them and can you do that in such a time frame that they aren't able to fire their missiles so that comes into, calls into a lot of question, um, those kind of things. And if you can do those sorts of things, can you potentially eliminate a second strike capability? Um, that, you know, again, that's a huge factor when it comes to the mutually assured destruction doctrine. Um, especially in light of, there's been a lot of missile test failure coming out of Russia, like with the Sarmat missiles. And I know a lot of my earlier videos, man, a lot of people on the pro-Russian side were always talking about, you, haven't include, don't, you didn't include SARMATs, what about SARMATs, what about SARMATs, and everything. Well, five of the last six tests have been failures, including the recent one where it blew up on the test site. Um, and stuff, which is funny reading those comments because people are talking about, um, I don't think they understand when they're testing a missile, they're not testing it with a nuclear warhead on it. They're testing the missile platform. And I think people don't understand that, like, thinking like it was going to be a, um, like an actual nuclear explosion happened and everything. And it's like, it's not, that's not what a missile test is. You know, there's two parts. There's a missile and a warhead. We've never, nobody's ever tested a nuclear um, warhead attached to a missile. Um, it's too unpredictable. So we test nuclear explosions, but it's done in a controlled fashion. It's not at the end of a missile. Um, and so now they test, they'll test with warheads. They're not nuclear warheads. They'll be conventional warheads. So they test with the reentry vehicles and stuff. And again, this is just keeping a high level, but they don't, they don't test those like that. So it's kind of funny reading some comments from people on Twitter about that. Anyways. There's test failures with that. There's test failures on the Poseidon system. There's test failures in the yards. I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot, I call into question, a lot on these capabilities of these newer platforms coming out. But, you know, and I think sometimes people are too quick to dis dismiss them because of that, but it's a big gamble to take to assume that just because they're having test failures. I mean, we had a test failure when we tested ICE, one of our ICBMs recently. Britain's had a few when it tested their SLBMs, which is the Tritons, which we haven't seen to have that issue, but Britain has. Um, so you don't want to take any of that for granted, but certainly with these, what I call the wonder weapons that they unveiled in 2018, a lot of people made such a big deal about them, but I think it was a lot of, uh, just reeked of some very bizarre desperation instead of actual sound reasoning behind it. Anyways, total tangent here, back to the move. So tomorrow will be kind of wrapped up on our end. They'll pack the next day and then they'll load and it'll be a lot of fun. And it won't be fun at all. Not, not in the least. It, it sucks tremendously. In some ways you're almost like, you know, if you had the capability, just do it yourself. Just, I don't know. You just feel guilty. People working around you and stuff like that. But either way, paying a lot of money, well, you know, hopefully a decent portion goes into the people doing the actual work, but, a lot of money being paid into this, so I shouldn't feel guilty. Anyway, thanks, everybody. Have a great day.